Chapter four. I'm going to see my grandparents. I am going to see my grandparents. After all these years, all these questions ago, I'll finally get some answers. Now the big question, what to pack? As I walk to my bedroom to pack, I realize that I'm going to miss it this summer. Dad picked this house out right after my mom died. He and Judy married only a year and a half later. It was really Judy who helped my dad quit drinking over time. Bye-bye, Jim Beam. Bear, who technically is my stepbrother, came with Judy. So we've been here a while, booze-free, but little brother seems to give me a hangover each and every day. Our house is a seven-bedroom, five-bath house with 7,000 square feet, a behemoth of the neighborhood. We live on Lake Minnetonka, where all the old Minnesota money families park their palatial abodes. Lake Minnetonka is the fourth largest lake in the state, but you can't even buy a house on its shores for under a cool million. Minnetonka is only about 12 miles from the city of Minneapolis, but it's really worlds away economically. You'd think with all this money my dad breaks in, I could make friends with at least someone around here who might want to hang out with the daughter of the famous, or infamous, infamous. I can't ever remember the difference. Doctor. Back in my room, I'm sitting on my bed amid an ocean of clothes. What does one wear when first meeting an Indian? I ask Judy what I should wear when she ambles in with more laundry. She may be annoying, but she has good fashion eye. So, Judes, have you ever met an Indian before? I ask. Well, I did read Gandhi's biography last winter, she replies, while piling up more clothes into my suitcase, her sibilant S calling out to the birds. No, Judy, the other kind, the American kind. How did Judy ever make it through nursing school? Good thing she quit working after marrying my dad, or she could have caused an international incident. Well, she continues, let's see. How many American Indians do I know? Judy looked up at the ceiling while mentally counting on her fingers. I guess there's just you, Apple. Wow. I just about had the wind knocked out of me. I guess technically I am Indian, but I just never think about it anymore. It's like one half of me is hidden, the Indian part, and I know nothing about it. It's funny to think about being Native American, American Indian, which means I will definitely pack my rodeo girl look clothes, throw some jeans on me, and I'm ready to go. Giddy up. We pack up the Land Rover and head out on I-94 up past Fargo, then drive due north to Morinville, North Dakota. Morinville, home of maybe I'll get some answers, North Dakota. The farther out I get from Minneapolis area, the more anxious I get. Isn't seeing cows in hayfields supposed to be calming and relaxing? What's up with that? And what's up with this smell? Oh, cancel that. It's just bare next to me in the car. How can boys smell so much? Dad and Judy are dropping him off last in Minot, North Dakota after me. Apparently, North Dakota is eating young like there's no tomorrow. This whole time since we've left home, my dad and Judy keep looking at me, checking to see if I'm having a nervous breakdown. Funny, but I don't feel anything yet. So I just smile at them and crank my music even louder. Leaning my head on the window, I wonder what I should be feeling. Should I be nervous? I'm just meeting the parents of my mother. My mother who died because of me. What if I have made a colossal mistake? Jeeves, turn this heap around. I know what I'm feeling and it isn't good. All of a sudden, I feel my body full of nerves. I think I've made a huge mistake and apparently so do the hot and spicy cheese puffs I ate for lunch because they have erupted past my mouth and onto Bear's lap. He takes one look at the puddle of puke and starts his own Mount Vesuvius right into the back of Judy's head. Houston, we have a problem. After we pull over, clean up, and fumigate the Land Rover, we're back on our merry way. Except I'm not feeling too merry about this. But I really need to get out of this car and away from the faint whiff of cheese puff. I've got my iPod cranked again, when I look out the window as we pass a massive sign reading, Welcome to the Turtle Mountain Chippewa Indian Reservation. Underneath it, someone spray painted in fluorescent green, Whites need not apply. Yikes. Don't ask me why, but suddenly I have the urge to look up at the sky. For some reason, I sort of thought I'd see an eagle or two soaring above, and maybe hear some flute music. 
Isn't that what happens on TV when Indians show up? But no such luck. Looking out the window, I notice this isn't the lush landscape I pictured when I thought of Indian Reservation. It surprises me because I thought I would be seeing majestic pines and towering oaks mingling with poplars and birch trees. Instead, this is just the opposite. There is little to no prairie grass or shady groves of trees. I see scrub brush and prickly-looking plants littering the land next to the small highway as we make our way farther into reservation territory. I'm pretty sure I see one of those tumbleweeds cartwheel across the road, too. The land starts to gently slope into slight hills as we make our way to Morinville, North Dakota, just five miles into the border of the Turtle Mountain Reservation. We finally pull into the little town. Apparently, it's the home of 1967, 1968, 1969, and 1970 state basketball champions. As the sign states in peeling paint, I'm a bit worried. Has nothing good happened here since 1970? We're looking for the address 2905 Rose Place. Dad remembers coming here a few times after he and Mom got married and finds the address in no time. They were only married four years before she, before she, you know. I came along then, too. Turning off the main highway, the car continues to bring me closer to my past, but my stomach has other ideas. Bear hears my gut churn and looks at me with a glare that could kill. Dad, open the windows quick. Apple's gonna blow again. Oh, chill, I calmly reply. I'm just hungry. Such a lie. My stomach is churning with a mix of nausea and nerves, with little bits of licorice floating around. Dad bellows. Both of you. Just, just, oh, here's the road right here. The long, narrow gravel road we turn at is flanked on either side by a group of pine trees. The mailbox at the end of the driveway is rusted out tiny tractor balancing on top of a rotted tree stump. Surrounding it are hundreds of miniature rosy flowers somehow turning the rotting corpse of a mailbox into a scene worthy of a postcard. Backwoods sort of beauty, I guess. Apple, it's just around the bend, Dad says. I close my eyes, not wanting my image spoiled by the truth. Please, please, Mom, show yourself to me. We must have arrived because the car stops. With my eyes still shut, I hear Judy and Bear inhale quickly. It's colorful, she says. It's cozy, Bear adds. It's a pink trailer, I spit out after I opened my eyes. My mind never imagined this. I thought maybe it would be a log cabin nestled between tall pines. Or perhaps an old farmhouse standing in what was once the family acreage. But this? This can't be where my mom grew up. Dare I say it, but was she? Trailer trash? Mom, who are you? But I don't have a second to ruminate on this, because right then, I notice a gaggle of people on a deck off of the trailer. Did I mention that it was pink? Flamingo pink. Pepto-abysmal pink? But instead of running out to meet us and yelling over each other as they greeted their long-lost granddaughter, they just sit there and rock in their chairs and stare at us. Rock and stare. My dad sighs a deep breath of courage, unbuckles, and tumbles back in time as he opens the door to his past. In slow motion, we all followed suit. We got out and stare. They just sit and stare. If only I could have harnessed all this carbon dioxide as everyone exhales, it could solve the oil crisis with plenty left over. Your front tires are low, one of the Indian people on the deck finally says after what seems like ages. This is the first thing I hear from my long-lost clan, that the car is riding low, not, Oh, Apple, you're here! Now our life is complete! Whoever said American Indians were a wise, unassuming, or kind people apparently have never met these Indians. But I'm getting all of my information from TV. Never a good thing.